In this video, I would like to point out the special relationship between orthodontics and musicians' medicine. It may not be clear to everyone, professional musicians have to be just as healthy and as fit as top athletes. So the connection between orthodontics and musicians' medicine. It may not be clear to everyone. Professional musicians have to be just as healthy and as fit as top athletes. First of all, what is musicians' medicine? There are many special disciplines in medicine. And in musicians' medicine, we deal with the particular stresses that professional musicians are subjected to when they spend hours and hours with their musical instrument and every day and practice it over their entire professional life. Aside from the psychological stress, there is something worse than the well-known stage fright. You also have to be really physically fit if you have to repeat the same movements with the highest precision over and over again. If that does not work, we can hear it immediately. Johann Joachim Quantz, the flutist and friend and teacher of King Frederick II of Prussia, wrote in his textbook. I read it to you in English. I did not translate his words in English. It is written in an old and ancient spelling. So, the flute in particular requires a perfectly healthy body, an open, strong chest, a long breath, equal teeth that are neither too long nor too short, and lips that are not plump and bulky, but rather thin, smooth and fine, which have neither too much nor too little flesh and can close the mouth without being forced. A fluent and a dexterous tongue, well-formed fingers that are neither too long nor too short, nor too thick fleshed nor too pointed, but rather that are provided with strong nerves, and an open nose that you can both draw your breath easily and give it off. If these are the basic requirements for, for example, to play the flute, then for a professional musician it is not only important that he or she is given these requirements, but that they are also maintained, despite the workload and despite the aging. And what might be just a trifle for a non-musician, for a professional musician, it is ultimately existential. We in orthodontics are responsible for the mouth and the jaw region and in the musician's medicine we are primarily responsible for wind instruments. But the neck and the jaw are also connected and there are patients who play the violin or the viola who also need help from us. And singing is also part of it. To start with, let us have a look at some examples for instruments. The flute, clarinet, oboe and the like, bassoon, and the brass instruments like the trombone and um, trumpets, for example. And also the higher strings, which is uh, violin and viola. If uh, you now are a professional musician yourself, or if you are a student of music, then you should be interested in what we are going to talk about in the next few minutes. We will talk about the anatomical prerequisites and about the naturally occurring constant changes within the tissues and we will address the specific stress caused by the musical instruments. We will also discuss possible solutions how to prevent damage, how to maintain a proper position of the teeth so that you can play your instrument at the highest professional level for a long time. To play sounds a bit playful or too gentle as a term. But for musicians, it is hard, hard work. I do not want to go into the special details of how each individual instrument is being played here. But it makes sense to everyone who has just seen the pictures of the instruments that what matters is that you have to have your lips under control, that your skin is healthy and that your teeth are in a good condition and positioned properly. As a musician, you have to have everything well under control in the finest coordination, which means the tongue, the lips, the tension of the muscles, the correct air pressure. There are so many factors. 
Musicians are very well acquainted with their oral region, and they have trained for years to convert the finest small movements of their muscles into beautiful sounds. The jaw joint and the attached muscles and fascia may become also particularly stressed. Here an anatomical representation on the left and an MRI image of the temporomandibular joint on the right with the mouth wide open. With the clarinet, for example, you have to keep your mouth a little wider open for hours and there, is, there are some other instruments where you have to push the lower jaw constantly forward to produce a proper sound. And you know that the temporomandibular joint can click or pop once in a while or even constantly. We do not always know the causes and we, we cannot always get rid of it, this popping sound. But it is bad when, for example, musical singers with a certain jaw opening thunder out their popping sound in the audience um, through the uh, microphone, often amplified. Every musician knows his body exactly, has to feel inside himself, and everything in the oral cavity has to be the same way as always. The smallest changes can cause major disruptions. In the following we will ask ourselves whether we anatomically always remain the same, or whether there are changes, perhaps in the position of the teeth, that alter the oral cavity in such a way that it becomes difficult for musicians to continue to play as always. So, the muscles need to be trained, but they also need sufficient rest so that they won't need to be over, overtaxed or they cramp or uh, suffer from any neurological damage. Focal dystonia is a, a dreaded complication, indeed a disease. This means that individual muscles or small parts simply do no longer obey. In musicians' medicine there are specialists, neurologists, who exactly know what is happening and how this perhaps can be remedied or even prevented. Many other patients or people who are not musicians might not even have a problem with that. But for musicians it is essential that everything works well. Then the teeth. They have to be healthy and to stay healthy. Here I can only point out that everyone should go to the dentist every six months for the usual prophylactic sessions. There it is checked whether all the structures are healthy, they are professionally cleaning all the teeth, and they control if the biotope of the oral cavity is well balanced. And if any fillings or dental restorations should be necessary. With the musicians we are talking about here, the teeth should not only look beautiful, but they also must not be given a different shape through a new filling or a crown, which then maybe cause uh, complications for the musician that the instrument no longer fits the way as it did before. The dentists know it and have to be careful here. It is best for the musicians to take their instruments with them to the dental office. It is also possible that the instrument can cause damage to the teeth. If it grinds against tooth enamel for many hours and days and weeks and months and years, decades, then it can leave traces. This must be checked by the dentist, again with the instrument in the office. And now we come to the tooth position. We know from orthodontics that teeth can move for a lifetime. This is due to the constant fiber and bone remodeling. They react to even the minor forces which with changes in their position. You can Feel your own dental fibers, by the way, if you clench your teeth firmly together. Then you will notice easily that your teeth are being pushed away a bit. You stretch the fibers and the teeth give way. However, you must do that for a bit longer time. Now, how are the teeth anchored in their bony sockets? In this sequence of images you see a lower incisor, how it is supported by bone. When we enlarge the images further, you can see also the supporting fibers attaching the tooth through to the surrounding bone. And under the microscope we can see it even in more detail. These are figure plates from my textbook. The abbreviations are of minor importance here. Above all, you should see the two teeth on the left, one of which is tilting to the right. And on the tissue sections, made by my friend Andreas Jäger, we see the supporting fibers which hold the tooth in its bony socket, and we see the cells which continuously take away and build up again supporting fibers and bone. So even low forces acting on the teeth result in tissue remodeling. 
And so we know now that the teeth can rock in their bony compartments like ships in a harbor. And also the teeth can move in response to the slightest forces. This is how orthodontic appliances work that everyone knows. With this background of knowledge, we must now ask ourselves inevitably whether musical instruments that act on the mouth can also move the teeth away. Yes, there are studies and yes, this can happen. Well, maybe not with everyone, but it is being observed and of course we want to prevent that. Current reviews reveal some studies that show there is a connection between playing wind instruments and malalignment of teeth and other damage in the mouth and the jaw area. However, the literature is not too abundant because many musicians shy away from being examined too closely. It is obvious. If word gets around who has any complaints with the tough competitive pressure, you find yourself very quickly on the cold bank. In orthodontics, we are used to correcting the position of the teeth that have moved away, even without the influence of any musical instrument. You may be familiar with orthodontic brackets and arch wires. And here you can see a treatment example with um, sequential aligners. At the end of any treatment, we also need to hold the teeth in place. Every patient that we have treated orthodontically will receive a retention wire glued to the back of the teeth. It should stay there for life. And on top of that, there are retention splints, a template that is worn once a week. Here is a selection of different devices that I've seen over the time. Each one has advantages and disadvantages and which one is actually being used must be decided individually by your orthodontist. In any case, we can now also use this knowledge for musicians' medicine. Now we just have to try whether this retention wire interferes with playing. Some people can get used to it quickly, others take longer, and the wire can also be made from different and thinner materials. Or we leave it out. But instead then you have to wear the template splints even more often. But well, we have to do something, otherwise the teeth will slowly but constantly wander away. We have seen that in so many cases. At this point, one more thing is important. We will not line up the teeth of every musician according to the textbook ideal. After all, the musicians use their teeth for his or her profession. And therefore, during orthodontic treatment specifically for them, we have to proceed much more individually and maybe adapt the tooth position to the instrument and to the playing habits. And we have to talk about another burden, vibration. What we find so beautiful about music when we feel the vibration in our belly, heavy vibration will exercise strain on the dental supporting fibers. Some musicians protect their teeth and the surrounding structures with such cushion pads. I hope it really helps. These fibers are actually very delicate. You should have them checked by a periodontologist. These are specially trained dentists, especially for the gums and what is underneath. And finally, uh, we come to the neck. In order to produce a sound that is really reproducible and clean, uh, you have to ensure the right body tension also with your neck. Some of the instruments are really very heavy. If you think of the bassoon, for example, which is also supported by shoulder straps. With a violin, the additionally twisted head position may contribute to further muscular tension, which has been proven by further studies. And this condition is well known as a temporomandibular dysfunction. An additional cause may then be the performance stress that a musician is also under. This then requires special treatment efforts by specialists from the various different disciplines that we have in musician's medicine. Because the muscles are connected to one another over greater distances in the body via the fascia, tension and pain can also arise in completely different body regions where you did not expect it at all. The specialists in osteopathy know this very well. So why orthodontics? Well, you see, orthodontics is not only good for anybody, but it also has a specific importance also in musicians' medicine. We have already been able to help many musicians to find back to a relaxed, beautiful sound. 
Many larger cities and university hospitals have facilities for musicians' medicine. In Berlin, the Center for Musicians' Medicine can be found at Charité University Hospital.